In today's personal video, I wanted to talk about my path as a writer, essentially how I got from the first time that I began to write my own stories to where I am today, and all of the things that happened along the way. This is just gonna be a loose timeline of events and what I remember specifically, and hopefully hearing about my path as a writer and how I got to where I am right now will help you feel a little bit better about where you are, because I know that when I was younger, and even at the ages of 12 or 13, I was frustrated at how much I hated what I was writing. And even now, looking back at my old writing, whether it was from when I was 15 and 16 to when I was 20 or 22, or even the novel that I've published, I can definitely see where I personally have experienced a lot of growth and I even cringe at some of that older writing. So ultimately, the goal of this video here is to one, be a little more personable and explain how I got to where I am and the successes and failures along the way, as well as to just show people that there isn't really a perfect path. And as long as you continue writing and keep putting effort into the craft, you will eventually improve. Like any skill, writing is something that has to be trained. It's not something that you are going to master right out of the box. I don't think any successful writer would tell you that writing is exclusively a talent and not everybody is capable of doing it. I think that anyone is able to be a writer. It just takes a lot of practice, time, and dedication. All of the understanding and skill that I've acquired has been through practice and practice alone, on top of some education and courses that I took and just being a student of other writers in general. But really what helped so much was just that I kept with it. And so I hope that this video will help you to see that as long as you stick with it, you're going to get better. And if after you finish writing something, you go back through what you wrote and you find that you hate it, that really just means that you're getting better as a writer. Between when you started the project and when you finished it, your skill improved. So by the time it was over, when you go back and look at it, you just don't like it as much as you thought you would. So with that foundation set, let's go back to the very beginning. I would get my mother to staple a bunch of papers together, or I would have her buy me some composition books that I could write stories into. I don't recall exactly what my first story was. I just didn't really see the value in keeping those things back then, and right now I really wish that I had. In fact, I continued to just destroy things I hated well into my teens. The earliest thing I have of my writing was actually written when I was probably 17 or 18. I would like the opportunity to go back and look at how far I've come since then, but I don't have any of these earlier works, so I'm really just going off of my own memory. I wrote in these stapled together sheets of paper that I would have my mother put together for me as a sort of blank slate book from the ages of probably five to eight or nine, and I would always fill them up with stories typically about my classmates. Yeah, it was kind of mean to write stories about my classmates, but at the time, I didn't have a super broad imagination in those terms, so I wrote stories in which my classmates were demons or monsters. There wasn't any logic behind it. I can't tell you why all of our classmates were monsters and demons, other than the fact that as a kid I didn't like most of my classmates. The series of stories was called something like Heroes of the Playground. I don't think at the time that any of the composition books or stapled together sheets of paper that I filled were about stories other than my friends and I, or the classmates we didn't like, or the teachers we didn't like. That was pretty much the gist of it. I remember at one point, I was in third grade, there was a writing competition and I wanted to enter it, but I wasn't allowed to enter it because my teacher believed that I was going to write stories about my classmates and she didn't want that to be something they were all going to read. And I protested, and I told her that if she told me that, I would have written a story about something else. And I, I'm pretty confident that I meant that. If I'd been told you can't write a story about your classmates, I would not have written a story about my classmates. I would have found another creative outlet. I would have alluded to the fact that they were my classmates, probably. I would not have been as direct as I was because I just used all of my classmates and teachers' names in my books, like it was them. If anyone had even told me that it was not okay for me to be writing those stories about them, I, I think I would have either stopped or I would have not shared them with people at the very least. I wasn't allowed to enter that writing competition and I remember that really sucked for me and having that be the reason why as well was pretty hurtful too. Like I 
I knew I was capable of writing stories that weren't about my classmates. I just never had a reason to. These were the easy stories to write. They were fun, and my friends and I liked writing and reading them. I think that one of my friends also wrote stories in the same vein. It was fun for us. We had a good time. We were also friends who, like, made videos and stuff together when we were kids. I don't have any of those either, but those were just the kind of friends we were. We were creative, we were just a small group of friends who liked to tell stories. It was mainly just for us. I never had the ambition of sending these stories off to an editor or something like that, but hearing that there was a writing competition and I wasn't allowed to enter it because my teacher didn't want me writing stories about my classmates really sucked. What I think is most important about this stage is not the quality of the writing or the content of the writing, it's the frequency of it. I wrote a lot. I don't even know how much I wrote at that time, but it was constant. I filled several composition books and all of those stapled together sheets of paper over and over and over again. The next thing that I remember doing in terms of advancing myself was around the age of 11 or 12, I decided that I wanted to increase my writing skill. So I stopped writing my own original stories and started novelizing video games that I liked, which was never gonna get me anywhere ultimately in terms of like a career. But my goal at the time, and I'm surprised that I had the foresight to do this, was not to improve the way that I concoct a plot for a story, but to improve the method that I use to deliver the plot of a story. So I was taking other plots that already existed in video games and rewriting them as novels. I remember I did Wind Waker and I did Fire Emblem Sacred Stones, and both of those were excellent exercises. Wind Waker, because the main character doesn't have any dialogue, so I had to use the dialogue of other people around him, and I started learning how to use different dialogue tags to convey feeling and emotion in specific ways, and I found ways to make it so that the scenery was described well. And because I had these visuals to work off of in Wind Waker, I was able to not have to worry about using my imagination just to pull the entire world in here, but I could focus exclusively on how I would describe each of these scenes. And from the ages of 11 and 12, to see that that was something I needed to improve was pretty useful. I don't know if this is advice somebody gave me or something I saw someone say they were doing online or what it is that prompted me to want to do this, but I remember sitting down and doing it. The other one that I did was Fire Emblem Sacred Stone, which if you're not familiar with it, is a strategy role-playing game. It is turn-based and it's very combat heavy. Every level is combat and I cannot think of a better way to figure out how to write interesting and compelling combat scenes than to try to novelize a game like that. What I really got out of the exercise of novelizing Sacred Stones was that yes combat is pretty much repetitive in this game but as a writer I need to make it not repetitive. I need to make it interesting and compelling and I need to come up with decent prose for this, and I also just can't keep writing the same thing over and over again. There's only so many times that you can describe that a character was stabbed with a lance, and so this was a huge exercise in writing interesting combat scenes and making those combat scenes non-repetitive when the entire book is pretty much a long combat scene. I hand wrote this, I wrote it in a series of notebooks, and I believe that I had probably six or seven hundred handwritten pages of this by the time that I got to the end. And I, man, I can't believe that I dedicated that much time to doing that, but I'm really glad that I did. And I can guarantee you that I was a much better writer coming out of the end of these exercises than I was when I started them because I learned so much through the practice of writing. I would actually encourage young writers who have the time to do this to sit down and try to do something like that. Find a game that you like that doesn't have a novelization. Try to make a novel out of it, not with the intention of selling that novel, but with the intention of just improving your skills as a writer. Now, I don't know what I was writing between the ages of about 13 and 16 or 17. I know that I was writing. Uh, I don't believe there was ever a period where I stopped writing for more than a year. So I was writing something during this time, but I cannot recall for the life of me what it was or what it would have been. What I do know is that at about the age of 16 or 17, I began writing a series called The Overlord Saga. The Overlord Saga is a series that I'm going to read some excerpts from in an upcoming video. And this was a really strong exercise for me, and I learned a lot in the process of writing it. But I can only find two of the full books and one of the prologue novels that I wrote for it, but I cannot find the other books that I know that I wrote. In fact, I know that I wrote six of them because I ordered physical copies of the first six books so that I could 
edit them as large pieces of paper. Unfortunately, those are completely lost. It took me forever to find books one and two, and I do not know where the other ones are. It really sucks that I lost all of those because, I mean, that would be a lot of fun to go back through and read through everything I wrote and criticize myself and also just see how far I've come since then. The Overlord Saga was my attempt at writing a villainous hidden world fantasy sci-fi series. So the point was that there was this underground Illuminati-esque organization called the Shadow Alliance, and they would employ young people from the ages of about 16 to 21 who were troubled and who they could easily take advantage of in this because those people had no future or they had committed crimes. Anything that they could use to manipulate these people into joining the organization with the promise of a brighter future. So they would essentially train up thieves and hackers and murderers and all of these people to do horrible things and that was the premise of it. And I had this whole idea for like a nine book series where at the end of it, like the last book, it was going to pretty much be like a supervillain versus superhero kind of conflict. And I still think that was a pretty good idea, but in the end my execution of the whole thing was just horrendous and so filled with angst that I, I was never going to execute that story properly. So that was a period of writing from the ages of about 16 to probably 19. And in the course of writing these six books, I wrote well over a million words. And I was learning a lot more about how to set up the story, which is also part of why when I got to the sixth book and I went back and started editing the first one, I realized I hated it. I absolutely despised it because my writing had improved so much by the time I got to book six. So book one was just a dumpster fire and reading it now, I can absolutely see why I stopped writing that series at that point, because of course I would want to give up on it when I realized that I'd been building on this completely shaky, horrible foundation and I have no idea how to move forward with it. There's nothing like dedicating three years of your life to something and then you go back and you look at it, just put your hands on your hips and you nod and you look at it and you realize this is a dumpster fire. However, I absolutely have to thank the Overlord Saga for getting me to where I am now. Those three years that I dedicated to writing the series led to me writing a couple of spin-off books that ultimately got me to the point I am right now. The first spin-off book was a novel that was a murder mystery and a prologue to the Overlord Saga. It followed a completely different character. It took all of the lessons that I learned from writing those first six books and applied them to this individual and showed his tragedy. And his tragedy was way more unique than any of the other ones that I've written before. There are a lot of plot holes that are present here, but my writing in that book was a lot better. In fact, I actually shopped it up to agents and I got several agents who asked to see more, but once they saw more, they said that the book just wasn't for them. But getting an agent to say, yeah, send me more of this was a huge confidence booster to me. It told me I'm on the right track. I'm going in the right direction. Something is improving in my writing and I can probably do this if I keep at it. So from there, I wrote another spinoff called Edwin. Edwin was a short story about an individual who already worked for the Alliance and he was a researcher there. But it was less about his work with the Alliance and his research with them and more about his home life with a disabled wife and an infant daughter. Edwin focused really strongly on the challenging family bond. His wife is immobile and if I remember right, she was completely paralyzed and incapable of speech, and she hadn't always been, right? This was a debilitating disease, and it was breaking his heart every day. Not only that, but he's also having to take care of his daughter all the time, and that is making things really hard on him. There's a scene where he has a mental breakdown, he just pulls over his car and gets out of it, and is just screaming and crying outside of the vehicle on the side of the road. I think that's in that book, if I remember right. It has been a long time since I read Edwin. But this is a short story I wrote and I submitted it to the Writers of the Future competition and I got an honorable mention from the competition. I remember that I was sitting on the train coming back from my cousin's wedding when I got an email and I checked the email and it said that I had gotten an award for my short story and I remember sitting there dumbfounded like, what are you talking? Is this real? Like I could not believe it and I had to reread the email over and over again and then I went and I checked the list of winning entries for that quarter and saw my book on there and I would just 
I could not believe it. And I remember I was almost in tears. I was so excited and overjoyed to have been recognized by some writers who have been in this industry a long time. Many of the judges on that panel are accomplished and knowledgeable writers. That means that these people who have succeeded in the industry read my book and thought that it was worth at least an honorable mention. And that meant so much to me. So now I've had two huge boosts of encouragement from sources outside of my immediate circle of family and friends reading my work. I've had several agents who have told me that they want to see more of a manuscript, even if they wound up not getting it after they saw more of it. And I've had an honorable mention now under my belt. And with those two in mind, I decided I was going to sit down and I was going to try to write a novel that was a lot more like what Edwin was than what any of my previous books were. So I wanted to write something that was a lot more emotional and a lot more heartfelt and personal. And that is why I wrote the book, How I Ruined My Life. There's a lot I can say about How I Ruined My Life. For one, I think that the writing in it is still pretty good. It's not the best. It's definitely not as good as I can do now, but it is still pretty solid writing. It's an easy book to read, which is what I was going for. I wanted a book you could sit down and read in a day, even though it's 50 to 60,000 words. I think it's actually 70,000 if I remember right. It's a long book, but most people that I know, even people who aren't readers, have told me that they could sit down and they would read it in a day. And sometimes they just reread it because it's an easy book to reread. And that means a lot to me that my book is that easy to read. And I can also see it. I myself have a really easy time reading it. The way that I wrote it and the way that I've learned how to write really contributed well to a story that just continues to be a page turner from beginning to end. Even people who didn't like the book have told me they had an easy time finishing it. So the writing itself is definitely a strong suit of it. It's just, I have some problems with the plot and with the execution. I did not execute the book as well as I wanted to. For one, the protagonist is supposed to be somebody that you don't like, but I don't make that clear. I don't make it clear that I think the protagonist is a piece of garbage. And so it just seems like I, the author, am the piece of garbage, which I was because the book is largely based on things that I've done in my past. And the main character is largely based on somebody I used to be. And so I just didn't convey those things well. And there's a lot of problems that I have with the way that the book handles all sorts of things. But I still like the writing in the book overall, and I still see it as easy to read. And it received several positive reviews. Like, the How I Ruin My Life was a third boost of confidence for me that told me, yeah, you can write. You're able to do this. Now sit down and write the story you really want to write. So with yet another boost of confidence under my belt, I began writing a series that had been on my mind and my heart for a long time called Imperfect. I don't want to go into too many details about this because I've been reworking it over and over and over again since then, but I have probably rewritten this series five or six times now. And each time, I mean, the first book is three or 400,000 words, and then I get to the next one and I'll write the second one and then I'll go back to the first one and think, I don't like the foundation and I have to start over and scrap it. And I have started over and scrapped this series so many times and I just can't get it out there. I think that I'm onto something this time, but it has been seven years since I released a novel now. And I don't like that at all, which is part of why I finally released a short story recently called The Ansley Arc, which got another honorable mention from the same competition that Edwin did. And I've written another short story that I'm hoping to release toward the end of the year. And then I'm also taking a break from writing Imperfect just because having to constantly rewrite this is exhausting. And I'm writing another contemporary story that is kind of meant to be a replacement for how I ruined my life called Keeping Secrets from Friends. And I intend to talk more about that in the future. This really brings us to now. Between the ages of 20 and 27, I have been writing and rewriting the same series over and over again. So I've always been writing even if I haven't released anything since then. In addition to that, I write my own homebrew campaign and have for well over two years now, which has been a excellent exercise in writing, if an exhausting and kind of draining one. But the point here is that I continue to write even after How I Ruined My Life was published. So there you have it. From the age of five to the age of 27, my writing history and the path that I took to get where I am today. I have been writing for the vast majority of my life and I have not stopped writing. I think the longest stint that I had when I wasn't really writing anything was probably about a two year period, which I'm not very proud of, but I had a lot going on in my life at that time. And 
even then I really wish that I had stuck with writing because it's such a solid creative outlet. I hope as well that you have taken something away from this. If you are a writer or a creator of any kind that the best thing that you can do is to stick with your craft and just keep going at it. Continue to give practice and continue to find ways to hone your skills and improve them. Even if you're not releasing something to the public and you're just doing it for yourself, continue to do that and eventually maybe you will have something you want to release to the public. The Overlord Saga, other than when I read some of the excerpts from it in a future video, is not going to see the light of day. I hope. I don't intend to publish it. Maybe at some point it will find its way out there, but right now, I mean, it's, it's only for me and I'm glad that I wrote it. I'm glad that I used it to improve my skills, but I have no intention of publishing that series. And I probably didn't really have an intention of publishing it when I was younger either. Anyway, thanks so much for checking out this post and taking the time to view this video. If you liked what you saw, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel, liking this video, commenting on it. Beyond that, you can also support me by following me on social media. I am at TLBanger on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, with Instagram being my most active if you want to interact with me. The next video that I have coming out in the personal vlogs is a lot more personal than any of the ones that I've put out here so far. So if you are interested in seeing something a little more challenging than what I've been putting out lately, uh, be sure to keep an eye out for it next Friday. Until then, bye.